Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my tutorial on how to make Android apps. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to finish up the application we started in part 12, so definitely watch that if you haven't seen it yet. I'll provide a link to it in the description under the video. And what we're going to do is focus in on getting the details activity to work, as well as the details fragment to work, and then we're going to set up our new activity in the Android manifest. If you don't remember from last time, which I'm sure you do, what we have here is when we're in portrait mode, whenever we click on one of these superhero names, we're going to automatically launch a details activity, which is going to replace this activity over here, which we made previously. And when we're in horizontal mode, when one of these items is clicked on, this information is going to be updated using the details fragment. So let's jump in and start writing some code. Alright, so most of the complicated stuff was done in the last tutorial, but there's a couple other things we need to do here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and create a new Java class, and I'm going to call this guy Details Activity. And of course, that's Java file, and here it is. I'm just going to step through here piece by piece and create everything that we're going to need. So the first thing I'm going to do is this is an activity, so it's going to extend activity just like that and automatically updated our libraries. And then I'm gonna come in here and create a couple different things. So let's just right click and go to generate and then let's go to override methods. And what we're gonna look for here is on create. So this is gonna be fired whenever the activity is created. We can leave this here, of course. And the very first thing we're gonna do whenever this is created is check to make sure the device is in landscape mode. And if it is, we are going to shut down this activity because this activity is only meant to be here whenever we are not in landscape mode, when we're in portrait mode. And we're gonna do that by going for get configuration and then checking for the orientation and then checking if it is equal to configuration dot orientation landscape. And like I said, in that situation, in which we are in landscape mode, we're gonna call finish, which is going to effectively kill our activity. And then we're gonna put in return, done. Now, if we did not kill our activity, then we're going to be down in this part right here. And the very first thing we're gonna do is try to figure out what type of detailed information we're supposed to put inside of here. And we're gonna find that by calling saved instance state and checking if it is equal to null. And if it is, what we're gonna need to do is create the details fragment. So details fragment, which is a class we haven't created yet. And actually, why don't we jump over and create it? So details is equal to new details fragment. So let's go and create details fragment. Come over here, right click, new Java class, and details fragment. Of course, this is going to be used whenever we are in horizontal mode. And this is going to extend fragment. This is going to be a little bit longer than normal. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to jump into the titles fragment Java right here. And you're going to see right here where we created the details fragment by calling new instance. So we're going to have to go in and create that. And of course, it's past the proper index. So the proper hero data is shown. It's back into details fragment. And we're going to go public static details fragment. And one thing I want to make you guys aware of that doesn't really necessarily have to do with this tutorial is I've been having a problem lately where a lot of people think I'm not answering their comments. And the reason why is if you are not on Google Plus and you leave a comment on YouTube, chances are I will not see it or I will not be able to respond to it. Actually, the second one, I won't be able to respond to it. So just wanted to make that 100% clear. Okay, so it's past the index data inside of here. And then we have to come in and create our details fragment. Of course, it helps spell it right. New details fragment. And then of course, like we were talking about before, bundles are going to be used to pass data and we're going to be using the key named index in this situation. That's how we're going to know what type of superhero data to put on our screen. So create that bundle and then args.put int and we're gonna say this is index and then we're going to put whatever the index is in this situation. And then we're going to assign the key value to this fragment. We're gonna be doing a lot more with bundles here as the tutorial continues. So if they are in any way confusing, don't worry about it, you will get used to them because we'll use them over and over again. Okay, so we have that fragment created for us here and we have index in there for the key and we're assigning everything properly. 
Another thing we're going to want to do is provide an easy way for us to come in here and get the index that we're going to be using, get shown index. And whenever that's called, all we're going to have to do is just go get arguments and get int. And then we just provide the index key and zero. And that's all we're going to have to do for that. Now we need to handle on create view in which the layout inflator is going to put our fragment on the screen. So let's just come in here and go generate override methods. And inside of the fragment class, you're going to see on create view. And there this is. And like we've talked about before, the layout inflator is just going to put a fragment on the screen. The view group is going to be a view that you want to attach the fragment to. And of course, the bundle way over here is going to have the keys and the values that we want to be able to pass between activities. We're just going to get rid of this return statement right here. And we're going to come in here. And the very first thing we're going to do is create a scroll view so that we'll be able to put our hero data in it. And then users will be able to scroll through it. So we're just going to say scroll view. Call this scroller is equal to new scroll view. And we're going to have to pass a context so that the resources that we're going to need are going to be available. So just go get activity. Use that a lot. And then we're going to put a text view inside of it, which is going to hold all of our hero data. So we have to come in here and create that for ourselves. And again, we have to give a context that's going to provide access to all of the data that we're going to need to be able to create this. And then this is a new one. We're going to apply padding to our text view in a completely different way. So first, we're going to create an int, give it the name of padding. We're going to cast this into an integer, go down to the next page. And then we're going to go typed value. And a typed value is going to be able to hold multiple dimension values, which can be assigned dynamically inside of code, just like we're doing it right here. Again, something we're going to use a whole bunch of times, so if you don't quite get it, it just holds a bunch of dimension data. And we're going to go type value. And I'm going to have to type this out because you can't see it because the text is so big. So we're going to go complex unit DIP. And what we're doing here is just defining the unit type that we're going to use. And this, is, of course, is device independent pixels. And then go down to the next line. And we're going to define our padding right here in this situation, which is going to be four. And then we're going to get the specific display data for the device that this is going to be running on. Get resources. And then we're going to say get display matrix and close that off. So that's just a nice way to be able to define dimensions using a specific unit, specific padding, and the device itself that is running the application. And then we just come in here to our text view and we can set our padding. And in this situation, we'll just say padding, 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 and padding. And there it is. And now that we have the padding set up for our text view, we can just add our text view to our scroller. And then we're going to take whatever the currently selected hero's name is and put their specific data inside of it. So we're just going to go superhero info. And we're going to call specifically history, which is the name of the array in the superhero info class that we set up in the last tutorial. And we're going to go get shown index. And we got it. And then we say return scroller, which is the scroller that's going to contain our text view. And that's it. We're done with that. And now we can jump back over into the details activity and finish this guy up. So here we got our details fragment ready to go because we know we're in our in horizontal mode. And now I just need to get the bundle of key value pairs, which is just one, which is going to be the index that we want to use and assign them to the details fragment. So I'm going to go details and set arguments, get intent and get extras is how we get access to that information. Then we want to go and get our fragment manager and state we want to begin our transactions with this fragment. And then we need to define that we want to specifically use the details fragment in this situation. Let's jump down to the next line, by plugging details in there, and then commit. Oh, and come over here and type in ID. There we go. All set. And we had a little bit of an error over here in the titles fragment. So you might have to update that. We have to come in here and go get shown index. Now that's fixed. All those errors went away. And the only thing left for us to do is to update our Android manifest with our new activity that we just created. So let's open that up as well. And to define our new activity that we want to use, just go inside of the manifest. Go right after the first activity, the main activity that we have defined inside of here give myself a little bit more space so we'll be able to see everything here all at one time and this is just another activity and we're going to use the details activity that we just created and we're going to call label and define our app name then we can close that off and then define an intent filter and I'm going to get more into intents in the very next tutorial Let's just keep it simple Android name Android and the next thing up since I have covered fragments pretty thoroughly here of course we're going to come back to fragments again and again especially when I start making some real apps 
and let's just define that as a view. And of course, whoops, forgot to do this, just close this off. All right, so there's a whole bunch of pretty interesting and pretty fully colored ways of working with fragments. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna go heavily into intents, and of course, I'm gonna cover more in fragments whenever we start making regular applications. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.